over the years that this is where people, this is the reason people have difficulty with algebra, geometry, trig, and calculus. It's because they never have gotten good at this game. What we have here is they're going to randomly throw at you addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division of both positive and negative numbers. So bear with me. If you're really good at this, I won't spend more than five minutes on it, but I need to find out if you're good at this or not. And obviously, I don't want you to use a calculator. Okay? So just do it as quickly as you can. Here's the, this is where everybody screws up on these. Unfortunately, this is a big part of algebra, because this is constantly what you have to do in algebra, is add, subtract, multiply, and divide positive and negative numbers. So the reason people are confused by this, there's two negative signs, okay? This one is subtraction. This one is a negative sign. So the way to do subtraction problems is always change them to addition, and then change the sign on what was being subtracted. So now it becomes 1 plus 4, or 5. Huh? Okay. Do the same. No, 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 no. Do the same thing as we did before. Here, let me draw it up there. This is where all of the problems come, is when there's a lot of negative numbers. Again, this is the subtraction sign. This time, this is the negative sign. Okay? So, if we change that subtraction to a plus, and change the sign on what was being subtracted, which was a positive 4, we're going to turn it into a negative 4, and now we have minus 7 plus minus 4. Nobody gets that wrong. What is that? Yeah. Yeah, now on a straightforward subtraction problem where you have a bigger number minus a smaller number, you don't need to go through all those uh, manipulations. You don't need to change it to an addition problem. You're perfectly capable of doing subtraction problems regardless of whether it's a bigger number minus a smaller number or the other way. What's 3 minus 5? Negative 2. This one is... Yeah, no, no, this is 2, okay, but the one I just gave you was what is 3 minus 5? Yeah, in other words, you do the subtraction, and then you put the sign of the bigger number, basically, is the, the only two things you need to remember when you're actually doing subtraction, is subtract the two numbers and put the sign on it of the bigger of the two numbers. In other words, this would call for a plus sign. All right, you're pretty good here. Go ahead. I want to do. I want to keep going until we run into a few more negative signs. That seems to be where you have a little bit of difficulty. Okay. No. What I want you to do when you're doing division or multiplication is figure out the sign first. Always. Don't even look at the two numbers. What you're doing is you're dividing a negative number by another negative number. So what's the sign of your answer going to be? Yes. Yes. Now do the two numbers, and you get 7. Okay? 
and do that whenever you're doing multiplication or division. Figure out your sign first. Makes it easier, it just does. Here, what's the sign going to be? You're doing multiplication. No, here we have one negative sign. So it's the answer is going to be negative. When you have negative times positive, it's negative. When you have positive times negative, it's negative. The only time your answer is positive is if you have two negatives times one another or two positives times one another. Okay, so this is neg negative. No, don't don't uh, mix up multiplication and division with addition and subtraction. That's another place where people go wrong. Uh, this is a subtraction problem. Which which dash is the subtraction sign? Right. Okay. So here we're going to turn it into an addition problem. So what are we going to end up with? We're going to end up with minus 2 plus what? Correct. What's minus 2 plus negative 6? Okay. So when you're doing addition and subtraction, you don't really figure out the sign first. That's only when you're doing multiplication and division. And that's a good way to just keep yourself from making that mistake. Because you're not the only one that makes it. Tons of people make it where they apply the rules for these signs and they switch it back and forth between uh, multiplication and addition. Uh, and that's very key. When you have a problem like this, uh, you don't figure out your sign first. Now, before we go any further, I am going to copy and paste into the GoToMeeting chat box. Okay, here, you'll see it in a second. You see it in the chat window? Over on the if you, if you, you may have to open up your GoToMeeting control panel. They may have minimized it on you, or you might have minimized it. There should be two arrows that point towards one another. Click on those two arrows, and it'll pop up. And you may have... Huh? Okay, and there should be... Hold on, maybe I didn't... Oh, there it is. No, I hadn't hit enter. I had to hit it twice. I was I had only hit it once. Now click on that, and it's going to cause your browser on your computer to go to this website. Save it as a favor. Call it anything you want. Flashcards is the best thing I know. It's digital flashcards is what it is. So, okay, now. Here's the way I'd like you to think about this, Zach. Uh, you're actually pretty good here, okay? But if you want to be really good at math, and I mean this 100% true, if you want to do really good in your high school math, get great at this. Just like if you were going to enter a spelling bee. Spend some time perfecting your skill here. Now, think of it as a video game if you have to, but... Just get good at it and, and shoot, you know, you know, spend five minutes a night on this site. Just doing as many as you can and try to get as fast as you can. Speed is important. It is. Uh, it's not the most important. Accuracy is the most important. But you want to get so where you're like 99% accurate. And there's a reason for that. If, if you only get to say, I would say right now you're, you're at like 90% accuracy. Uh, on the problems we've done so far. The problem with 90% is that might get you an A in math class, but it causes you to use your calculator. <laughs> it 
In other words, if you're taking a test and you only have a 90% proficiency on arithmetic, you're going to go to your calculator. Anybody would. You don't want to make that one mistake out of 10. Um, and once you go to your calculator, then you kind of lose your abilities. Uh, people do. When, when you start using your calculator for single digit calculations like these are. So you want to avoid that at all possibility. And the best way to do it is to get 99% accurate at this thing. Or 100%. It's hard to attain 100% at anything. But 99% will do. And trust me, it will make your math so much easier, your algebra and everything else. And let me demonstrate. I'm, I'm going to go ahead and leave this now just because we don't have that much time left. And let's talk a little bit about algebra. Um, and I'm also recording these sessions and you will get a copy of the recording uh, as soon as it gets processed. I'll, I'll make a, uh, I'll make a YouTube video on it and, uh, give you the, the link. Um, how much algebra have you had? I never know. Eighth graders. They give you quite a bit of algebra in eighth grade. So you might have had a lot more than I think. Okay. Okay, so all right, let's just give you an equation. How do you solve for X? You're, you're close. You're close. Uh, the better first step is to get rid of this plus 4. In other words, the first step in solving an equation is try to get everything with the variable on one side and everything else on the other. So yeah, I'm going to minus 4 from both. And now I have 3x equals 12. Notice there's one simple calculation we just had to make. That's why it's so important to know these, because you end up having to do four or five of them in most equations. And then what's the next step? Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. Make it a little harder. This is the critical part of every equation. Where This is the point where you have to gather your like terms. And you want to gather all your variables on one side, all the numbers on the other. Now, you can do this in two steps or one step. Uh, the way I tend to do it is I'm going to move the 2x over to this side, and I'm going to move the 6 over to that side. What's that going to leave you with? No. No. When, when you, I know the way they teach it in school. The way they teach it in school is this way. Okay. And they do this in one step, not two steps. So that would give you this. Zero. And now you move the six over. Now, when I say move it over, I kind of have gotten rid of this step right here. In other words, I need to do that. But do I need to really write this? Why go to the trouble of writing that if you're always just crossing it off? But 
when you think about it, when you figure out I've got to move this six to the other side, what you so all you have to do is move it to the other side and change its sign. So instead of a plus six, it becomes a minus six. Okay, and now what's the answer? Nope. Turn it into an addition problem. I want you to get in the habit of doing that to all of these where they have multiple negative signs. If you see a problem that is a subtraction problem and it's got two negative signs in it, I want you to turn it into an addition sign problem. So, no, no, here's the subtraction sign. That's what I'm changing to a plus. And now I'm adding a negative sign to the six because that was a positive six. So I got to change its sign. It's now negative six. And now we have negative seven plus a negative six in parentheses. And what's that equal to? Negative 13? Yeah. And so um, that's that. And now let me change it just marginally, just to demonstrate another little trick that will make these easier. Let me make that a 4 instead. Trying to keep track of time here. I don't want to run you over. So now we have 3x plus 6 equals 4x minus 7. Now what are you going to do? That, that's one way to go. But notice what that's going to do. That is going to give you a negative coefficient of negative 1, right? in front of the x. Aha! You can move your variables to either side you want. So whenever you get to this decision point, you got to figure out which side should I move the x's to and which side should I move the numbers to. And what I'd like you to do is, is in general, move the x's to the side that will leave that coefficient positive. And if I subtract 3x, like you suggested, then I end up with 1x minus 7 equals plus 6. And now notice what happens. When I move this to the other side by adding 7, I get a positive coefficient over there also. So I get my answer. And I don't have to deal with negative signs. In other words, your math uh, performance is going to improve if you can deal with few neg few negative, fewer negative signs and more positive signs. So when you have a choice, always choose to move it to the side that's going to leave it positive. And it doesn't have to be a 1. I mean, if that were a 5, I would still move it over there, and then I would have 2x. But it's a positive 2x. And the only reason I say that is because uh, mistakes double when you have more negative signs than you need to have. Dealing with negative signs is one of the toughest parts about algebra. People want to drop them. If you put three negative signs in a row, they'll try like heck to turn it into two negative signs. I hate negative signs. So you just got to learn to deal with negative signs. But minimize them. Minimize them if you can. So, All right. Well, you know, um, since your school is starting so soon here, uh, the best thing you can do if you really want to prepare for your first math class is I haven't spent some time on that uh, math lab page. Seriously, just try to get good at that. I mean, you, you're good enough that it wouldn't take long before you would be perfect. You wouldn't be making any mistakes at all. It just takes practice. It's like any skill. It's going to take practice. And that nothing's going to be more valuable to that to you than that skill. Okay? All right, Zach, I will let you go. Nice having the first session with you. And uh, hopefully we'll work together online uh, during the school year. 
certainly if you need any help, let me know. All right. Bye-bye. You too.